Hey there, comrades. So, um, some of you know me as Irish Laddie, probably most of you, actually, but I chose that username when I was 11 years old and had a shaky sense of national identity. I'm actually American. So from now on, I'll be going as Vosh. Got it? All right, good. So, I'm an internet boy. And when I'm on Reddit, or YouTube, or in Twitch chat, or my Twitter DMs, or on Grindr, there's a very particular sort of person with whom interaction tends to leave me feeling very frustrated and angry. You see, I'm a leftist, and I give every shit about this storm of right-wing populism we're all weathering like a fucking hurricane. It comes with the territory of being a leftist, and being a decent person. It's strange, then, and sort of disquieting, that right-wing populists aren't the ones who leave me feeling that way. Frustrated and angry, I mean. It's not the fascists, the nationalists, the out-and-about racists, the transphobes, the anti-Semites, or any other pasty, degenerate faction of the alt-right. Now don't get me wrong, these people are terrible. I hate them. But they're not the ones who make me want to give up on politics and dedicate my life to breeding geckos. Now that honor belongs to the fucking centrists. So, before we get to that, leftism. Now, being a leftist means that I, in addition to being very strong, tall, handsome, sexually virile, socially competent, and packed with so much muscle my pecs are beginning to expand inwards and collapse my ribcage, am also very smart and have great opinions. Some of these opinions, like the need to abolish capitalism and deconstruct gender roles, are fairly tepid, while some, like my pathologically sexual desire to bully white male gamers, are pretty radical. I'm a radical, I guess. And that's a super arbitrary and contextual classification, mind. I mean, abolitionists and women suffragists were pretty radical in their time. What constitutes a radical belief can speak as much to society's limitations as it does to the severity of the belief itself. There are some people to whom radical thought, immoderation, zealousness, deviation from the status quo, is itself a threat to discourse, in spite of the incalculably significant and often valued impact radicals have had on society in the past. These people, centrists derived from the Byzantinian prefix sint, or to defecate loudly, can be found poisoning discourse and impeding discussion in pretty much every politically-minded corner of the internet. They will claim, loftily, that there are problems with both sides, and that the answer can be found in the middle. They denounce violence when it's committed unlawfully, but remain silent when violence is committed in line with the system, no matter the reasons for either. They condemn extremism as a matter of course, without considering its motivations. Their statements of belief, when issued, are often intended only to contrast and subsequently exaggerate a more radical belief. Centrists embody that which Martin Luther King condemned in his letter from Birmingham jail. Moderates, who are more devoted to order than to justice, who prefer a negative peace which is the absence of tension to a positive peace which is the presence of justice, who constantly say, I agree with you in the goal you seek but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. Listen, if you consider yourself a centrist, or a moderate, or a rationalist, or a, a midpoint man, or an omni-liberal, or whatever else, I've got to be a little bit mean to you here. I've got to be a little mean. Because you've let me down so many times. But, um, I mean, hey, I used to be one of you. And I did get better, so I get it. We should always be looking for opportunities to grow, because it's always infinitely less likely we're right about absolutely everything than it is we've still got a few things to learn. And if you're a centrist, and you don't want to learn, then maybe dip out here. Because centrists are, by and large, stupid, politically ignorant, ideologically vacuous, and riddled with more prejudices than my inbox will be angry PMs after this video makes me a millionaire and I can stop pretending to care about social issues. They are an intolerable cancer on political discourse, particularly on the internet, and serve to do little more than provide a cover for more extreme reactionary views. So, 
to learn more, uh, please sit down and uh, grease up your hog and join me as we insert ourselves into this, my first YouTube video. The Overton Window, coined by legal expert Joseph P. Window, refers to the range of ideas tolerated in political discourse, basically whatever isn't too outlandish to be discussed and considered by society at large. The exquisite, sensuous feminine angle? Today? Yes. A century ago? No. The Overton window is constantly shifting, being pulled left and right, expanded and contracted. It's difficult to imagine, but just ten years ago, transgender people had basically no presence in media or in political discourse. They were ostracized out of recognition. Their legitimacy so outside the bounds of the Overton window, a politician would have never been taken seriously if they tried to take a stand on transgender rights. Now, in 2019, being trans is mandatory, and they're coming for me next. Centrists, the ideal centrists at least, the platonic centrists, strive to find compromise between what they perceive to be the extremes presented on both sides of the political aisle. This does, of course, make them a slave to the Overton window and however it may shift. After all, if the window shunts rightwards, centrists are now obligated to adjust their beliefs accordingly, lest they occupy a political position which is now considered left-leaning. Uh, well, uh, okay, actually, wait. Hold on. We, we can do this with examples. Okay. It's 2014. You're a centrist, and you fall pretty much dead center between the mainstream conservative and liberal platforms of your distant bygone era. Election season approaches, and one of the liberal party's frontrunner candidates is a cantankerous old social democrat with ivory hair like Geralt of Rivia and the voice of an angel. He loses the primaries, but his populist rhetoric it resonates, and the rhetoric of the winning candidate is um, shifted leftwards to capitalize on that popularity. Social democracy, uh, lowered or even free college tuition, single-payer health care, increased taxation of the wealthy. It's all a little less taboo to discuss now. To put it simply, the Overton window is expanded leftwards. Now, the Conservative Party also fields a populist in their primaries, and he actually ends up winning. Not just the primary, but the presidency. His rhetoric is, let's say, a little more blatant than that of his party contemporaries, and his rise to prominence brings quite a few positions into the range of acceptable public discourse. Positions like banning all Muslim immigration to the United States, referring to news organizations as enemies of the American people, bombing the civilian families of suspected terrorists, splitting families and detaining migrant children at concentration camps near the border, legislating transgender people out of existence, failing to condemn and thus tacitly endorsing neo-Nazi rallies, lying constantly, all the time, like always, even when it's easily falsifiable, fueling anti-vaccination fervor, mocking veterans for getting captured as POWs, building a literal fucking 2,000 mile wall in the dirt to spite brown people. I mean, do you even remember what a slow news week feels like? We've grown jaded to conservative rhetoric that if uttered a decade ago would have been political suicide. The Overton window, the range of acceptable discourse, has been stretched way to the right. And see, now the centrist is in a tricky position. If they want to play the both sides card and continue advocating for a position equidistant to that of both parties, their rhetoric needs to grow more conservative. Nine years ago, a moderate was someone who encouraged the Democratic Party to water down the Affordable Care Act so it could be made palatable to a Republican Senate. Nowadays, a moderate is someone who denounces Antifa and neo-Nazi violence with equal fervor, equivocating the two and tacitly downplaying the latter. As the window shifts, the arguments have to change. Look at a centrist. Look them in their beady, reptilian eyes. If things get bad here, and I mean really bad, what position will they have to take next? I should throw a, a disclaimer in here. Now, politics is really complicated, and political positions 
can't really be charted on a graph, certainly not on a line graph. The Overton window isn't just a range along an x-axis. It's a vague and subjective descriptor meant to contextualize political discourse within a set of social expectations. Now, that doesn't mean it's not a useful term, it just means it's complicated. Do you want to get really complicated? Let's talk about core values. Because centrists sure as fuck don't. Underlying all belief, all policy, all political preference, everything, there are values. A chain of them, actually, uh, from least to most fundamental. I'll give you an example. There are many homeless people in the smoldering charcoal pit of a state my exquisitely muscular body currently inhabits, and I want something done about it. That's my policy position. I want something done about the homeless people in my state. Um, some, something uh, nice, obviously. Like, let's say, uh, vocational programs, meant to clean them up a smidge and uh, give them some job and social skills. So, why do I want that? Well, the goal of that policy would be an increase in employability and social integration, which will, hopefully, help them find jobs and give them the money they'd need to find housing. And with that, wham! No longer homeless. As to why I'd want them to no longer be homeless? Well, financial stability and sleeping in a warm bed are probably strong indicators of happiness. And I'd like the presently homeless population of California to, to be, you know, happy. And if you ask me why I want the presently homeless population of California to be happy, you'd reach one of my most fundamental values, an axiomatic value, a, a mighty tree trunk from which all my other beliefs and values grow outward like branches and sticks and leaves and shit. It's the root of my thought process, the presupposition from which all my other values derive. It is, in brief, I want as many people as possible to enjoy their lives to the greatest possible extent. Every position I advocate for, every policy endorsed, they're all in service of that value. Centrists are fundamentally incapable of acknowledging the influence values have on policy because they hold no values themselves, save an attachment to a moderation at the cost of all sense, they advocate for positions equidistant from both sides of the political aisle, even if those sides are motivated by wildly different interests and in pulling the country in mutually exclusive directions. Here's an example of a compromise which serves the interests of our nation. Republicans want to allocate $60 million to a National Park Revitalization Initiative, and Democrats want to allocate $100 million. So, who gets what they want? Tensions mount until a centrist enters the arena, calculator in hand and rainbow propeller beanie on head. He sweats profusely, anxiously scratching the itchy skid mark that runs from the seat of his pants down to the left ankle. What? He sputters breathily. If we allocated eighty million dollars? The compromise is made. Parties thrown, alcohol imbibed. It's a success for everyone, because you see, both parties wanted to achieve the same goal revitalization of our national parks, and they wanted to achieve it in the same way, by funding a revitalization initiative. Compromise can work there. Now, what do you do if Republicans introduce legislation barring transgender women from using their preferred restrooms? Or if Republicans move to repeal DACA? Or, hey, if Republicans are still really fucking mad about Roe vs. Wade, so they're doing everything in their power to limit women's access to an abortion in a manner which absolutely violates the spirit of the Supreme Court ruling, but just barely meets its letter. You see, compromise doesn't work in those instances. It can't work because the America Republicans are trying to build is mutually exclusive to the America Democrats are trying to build. Any compromise in any of these instances is an unequivocal loss for Democrats and the minorities they're trying to defend, and an unequivocal gain for Republicans who hate minorities. Whether you agree or disagree with the policies being laid out here, you have to recognize that there's absolutely no room for compromise. Do we ban transgender women from some women's restrooms? Do we build a border fence? Do we repeal every other DACA immigrant? Does every third woman get the abortion they want? It is not enough to blithely suggest moderation and ignore the wildly disparate values at play. 
sometimes, by which I mean every time, all the time, and mostly on the right, a side is wrong, or, or both sides, and it takes some real intellectual rigor to determine which position should be advocated for and which should be considered and dismissed. I want centrists to engage in that rigor. I want them to get yoked. I want them to cut their teeth out there. I want them to take their shirt off and rub their sweaty muscles against my own. I might regret saying that, though, because I feel like centrists, were they inclined to engage in discourse rather than muddy it, would probably end up siding with reactionaries. Does anyone else feel that way? I'm just speaking from personal experience here, but virtually every centrist I've wasted time speaking with seems way more concerned with rainbow-haired college SJWs than they do, say, the rise of white nationalism. And when I say I speak from personal experience, what I actually mean is that I channel divine existential truth through my throat, because centrists are always way the fuck more concerned with, with student activism, with Antifa, with ethics and video game journalism, whatever, than they are with real social issues. I've seen no evidence to contradict this. Please, in the, in the comments, supply me with that evidence. This is why progressives tend to consider centrists part of the opposition, and reactionaries tend to consider centrists useful idiots. Allies, even. Because to disaffected, politically ignorant gamer bros, it is far easier to be radicalized with a dog whistle than it is with leftist engagement. I invite this challenge. Can anybody find me some popular centrist figureheads? On YouTube, Twitter, anywhere? Real centrist, mind. Boogie2988 comes to mind, but every time he opens his mouth, he gets pile-driven back into a depressive stupor for regurgitating blatantly reactionary talking points. So, not much luck there for centrism. I can think of a few people who claim to be classically liberal, fiscally conservative, socially liberal, often found on YouTube and Reddit shitting exclusively on shallow misrepresentations of leftist talking points. I'm reminded of Sargon of Akkad, a alpha smooth brain, one might say, who is considered by America's favorite knuckle sponge, Richard Spencer, to be a great entry point for the alt-right. Quite a few of the centrists I've spoken to are tremendous fans of this entry point, of this crumbling cliffside of the precipice of fascism. The term we're looking for here is reactionary centrist, a person who holds reactionary views, but, for whatever reason, masquerades dishonestly as a moderate. To these people, listen, we don't live in moderate times. Moderateness to injustice, compromise with hatred, tolerance of intolerance, they are all, in effect, an expression of solidarity. And solidarity with fascism gets you bashed, too. Look, centrists aren't the only people I disagree with. They're not even the people I disagree with the most, not even close. I mean, I keep perspective. I keep my eyes on the looming specter of American fascism that's cast a pall over all my internet hog greasing. It's just, when I'm arguing with those fascists, the last thing I need is a swarm of, of fence-sitters who draw false parallels between incomparable extremes, who promote value-neutral discourse to the benefit of reactionaries and to the detriment of everyone else, who offer nothing besides obstacles between where we stand today and where we might stand tomorrow, the last thing I need, really, is a centrist. I'd rather have an open-minded ally, or, failing that, another fascist. With them, at least. I know where we stand. Big thanks to everyone who enjoyed my video, and a tremendous thanks to Reddit user Omnic1, who gifted me the microphone through which all of you are presently appreciating my sonorous voice. I just wanted to get some frustrations about centrists off my chest. This wasn't really meant to be a research-driven effort, but with that said, I know basically nothing about audio and video editing. Uh, I know a little bit more than I did when I began this project. I'm still mediocre, though, and I'm looking to improve. So please, do be critical with me in those comments. I'll read and consider every opinion thrown my way. Unless you're a fascist. Uh, obviously.